here for ABK Church. It is Sunday the 7th of March. My name is Andrew and let me welcome you here. And whether you're part of a regular church family or you're just joining with us for the very first time, you're very welcome and we look forward to worshipping with you today. These past few weeks have been going through the Gospel of John looking at what the best friend of Jesus says about him. But we take a break in that today as we join with Christians all across Scotland. Our message, our sermon today, is being brought by William Wilson, a minister down in Rutherglen, whose um, pulpit and whose church I have preached in in the past. And so it's great that uh, he is able to return the favour um, for this one Sunday. Before we worship, though, let me give you a couple of notices for our church family and our wider community. The first is our blessing bag project we've been putting together the bags these past few weeks and collecting all the stuff and now we're ready to um, distribute them to our community to those who live alongside us in the streets um, around us and so what we need is for you to get involved we want you to come by the church centre in Burby right next to the Burby church building and come and collect a bag or two or three and distribute them to those who you feel are in need of encouragement. Perhaps they're finding lockdown particularly tough. Maybe they're on their own, maybe they're going through some long-term illness. Maybe perhaps they're a single parent struggling um, with homeschooling and all the struggles of life and not having the support network they might be used to had lockdown not been happening. For whatever reason, that someone needs encouragement, some uh, in love and blessing in their life, come by, take a bag, and uh, that's your gift for them to encourage and love and to bless them. So what you can do is you can pop down to the church centre this afternoon, Sunday, um, at between 2 and 3 p.m. Or tomorrow, uh, that's Monday the 8th, between 2 and 3 p.m. Or in the evening, between half 5 and half 6. So that's today and tomorrow between 2 and 3 p.m. Or tomorrow between half 5 and half 6 Please come down, we've got about 100 bags to give out and to distribute and we want you to be the person that hands it over to your neighbour, to your friend, to your loved one as um, just a real blessing to those that we know and we love and we care about in our community. So come by, collect a bag and be a blessing. A few weeks ago we were thinking about the living waters of Jesus flowing out from us into the community. This is part of what it means to be a Christian, to be a blessing, to take the living waters that have been given to us and spread them and pour them out into our wider community. So come along between two and three today and tomorrow or half five and half six um, tomorrow evening and collect a bag and take it to someone um, over these next couple of days. Secondly, the anniversary, I guess, of um, this time we find ourselves in, the, the time of lockdown, is fast approaching. 
we went into lockdown um, on the Monday the 23rd of March and on the 23rd of March um, this year, in a couple of weeks time, uh, we want to commemorate that um, as a time of perhaps mourning, of a time of lamentation, a time of grieving and reflecting on the struggles of this past year. And so we as a church are going to put together um, a service that will be available um, to join in with um, for you to reflect upon this past year. So more details will be coming out over the next week or so. But on, Mon on the 23rd of March this year, we'll have a chance to, to gather and to worship and to bring our prayers and our struggles and our grief over this past year um, to God as we commemorate not with thanksgiving, but with uh, grief and remembrance um, and bring that to God on an anniversary. So that's 23rd of March and there'll be a chance to gather um, for that online as well. But without further ado, let us worship our God, let us worship our Saviour together as we join with Christians all across Scotland. May you be blessed as we worship together. Hi everybody. Well, we are well into March now. Might we begin to say that winter is behind us? Certainly the signs of spring are all around us and we delight in that. But here's the thing, seasons come and go. You know, everything changes, but God endures and is faithful through every season of life. And the word of the Lord is forever. So with these things in mind, we gather to worship from all across the country and beyond. I want to thank those who have contributed today, whether producing material or technically behind the scenes. Thank you to them. And now all of us, let us worship God.
Let's pray. Creative and ever-present God, at this time of lockdown, we gather now from different parts of Scotland and beyond. What do we do when we feel pleasure as we look around us? If we live in an urban area and see a sparrow or pigeon, how it pecks for food or flies up into the sky free from the constraints of the earth. If we live in a rural area, the lambs seemingly fluffy and light, full of buoyant life, the sheep keeping a wise eye on them, the delight of the cows when they emerge from the byre, their sound echoing in the air, joy that the darkness of winter is behind and the warmth and light of spring and summer lie ahead. If we remain indoors, television can transport us to the depths of the oceans, to the midst of the rainforests, or the whiteness of the Arctic and Antarctic. What do we do when we look at the world and feel pleasure? We bow down before you in awe and worship. You, the God who created all we see and appreciate, and all we cannot see, but which is part of your planet Earth, the world you formed so lovingly. And so we pray, Creator God, accept our worship now. In this season of Lent, our eyes turn towards Jerusalem and all the events that played out there. If we have ignored you and turned a blind eye to those in need, forgive us. If we have been selfish or unethical in our financial dealings like the money changers in the temple precincts, forgive us. If we have neglected to respond faithfully to your call on our lives, forgive us, we pray. Turn over our ingratitude, our selfishness, our neglect. Help us to make amends and re-energise us in your service. Over and over, you lift the heaviness that weighs on us, so that with lightness we can thank you for your forgiveness. May all we do be done in the footsteps of the one who died and rose again in three days, the one who loves us all, Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Today's readings from John chapter 2 verses 13 to 22. Jesus goes to the temple. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold the pigeons, take them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scripture says, my devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities replied with a question. What miracle can you perform to, to us to show that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, tear down this temple in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? They asked. It has taken 46 years to build this temple, but the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from the death, was raised from death, his disciples remembered that he, that he had said this, and they believed the scripture what and what Jesus had said. Thanks be to God for his word.
My name is William Wilson, and I'm the minister of Burnside Blairbeth Church in Rutherglen, just outside Glasgow. It's my privilege to be with you today. I don't know about other religions, but within the Christian church, buildings have always managed to evoke strong feelings. Ask anybody who tried to make changes in their church buildings, and I'm sure you'll find that it wasn't straightforward. Controversy is never far away. On a slightly different tack, it's now getting to be a thing of the past, but many of us have memories of respectable people at church tut-tutting and saying, why are those children running around? Where's the reverence? Regrettably, too often today, we're simply asking, where are the children? In our reading today, Jesus seems to bring these two things together. He stirred up a hornet's nest around buildings with the temple, but he also appears to be the one asking, where's the reverence? Before we think about that in more detail, let's take a step back. I don't know whether you noticed that this incident is recorded in John 2, near the beginning of the Gospel. That has raised all sorts of discussions about whether there was more than one temple cleansing and chronology in Jesus' ministry. You'll either be relieved or frustrated to hear that we're not going to focus on that. But it is worth noticing that John places this account straight after the beginning of Jesus' ministry, when he changed water into wine. In the same section of the Gospel, we have Jesus, the party maker, and Jesus, the party pooper. Turning the water into wine points to Jesus who is able and willing to meet our needs. While turning over the temple, tables point us to the Jesus who reserves the right to turn things upside down. This is the same Jesus, and we can't have one, the Jesus who answers our prayers, without the other, the Jesus who challenges and changes us. The angry Jesus, who confronted the temple traders, we're told, was consumed with zeal for his father's house. His challenge was about where's the reverence, because he was confronting religious corruption and a culture where the religious institution was getting in the way of the God it purported to worship. It seemed like a marketplace, and Jesus wanted to get the traders out of there. He revealed his authority as he very deliberately threw out the traders and referred to the temple as his father's house making an outrageous claim to those around that God was his father and planting the seed in the minds of his disciples about who he was and why he had come. Regrettably, religious corruption and scandal have never been far away. You can think of examples, and while it's easiest to point to examples that don't affect us, the blunt truth is that we know there have been times when our religious practices and institutions have obstructed rather than helped worship. There are people who say, the thing that stops me following Jesus is the bad behaviour of the church. The sad truth is that there will be more religious scandal before too long. I say this not because I have particular knowledge of what that might be, but because there always has been and will be. It's a function of human nature. As he cleansed the temple, Jesus challenged us not to protect institutions or rely on religious practice, but to focus on worshipping God and have a zeal for his glory above anything else. Don't let anything get in the way. We need to copy the ruthlessness of Jesus, who was determined that nothing would stand in the way of godly worship. When he was challenged about what to give him the authority to behave as he did, Jesus seemed to pour fuel in the fire. He said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. 
Now, of course, the disciples realized sometime later, and we well know, that Jesus was predicting his death and resurrection. This is another reminder to us that all of his ministry was building up to that as the focus of his mission. But why did Jesus use such provocative language? He well knew how central the temple was to the life of the nation and the huge effort that had gone into its building. He also knew that most of his listeners wouldn't understand what he was on about and indeed would misunderstand it. This was a conversation that came back to bite him later as he was on trial for his life because it allowed his enemies to accuse him of blasphemy. So why use this language? Jesus is pointing to how he was changing the way that worship would take place. The people who heard him were used to worshipping in the temple. In fact, some of them would have been on pilgrimage for the Passover so they could worship him there. And Jesus was effectively saying to them that he was the living temple. Worship was no longer about a place or even about a religion, but it was about a person, him. We sometimes talk about worshipping God in the name of Jesus. That was symbolised with the tearing of the temple curtain at Jesus' death, which meant that ordinary people could come to God. We come to God in the name of Jesus, who died and rose again. It simply means that because of Jesus, ordinary people, like all of us, can worship God and know God's love. A theologian called Leslie Newbigin has put it in these radical terms. The action of Jesus is more than an example of prophetic protest against corrupt religion. It's a sign of the end of all religion. Imagine that. You've tuned into a Church of Scotland service today that talks about the end of religion. That's maybe not what you expected. But Jesus, the disruptor, turns things upside down, including religion. He says, worship God and don't let anything get in the way. Not corruption, not religion, but come to God because through Jesus, ordinary people can. There was an incident where Jesus got into a theological discussion with the most unlikely person, a Samaritan woman. She'd had five husbands and was living with another man. They talked about where worship should take place, and Jesus effectively said to her, the place doesn't matter. That's good to hear if you're worshipping in your front room or if you're feeling the loss because you haven't been able to go to your church building for some months because of our current situation. Of course, if you're a churchgoer, It won't feel the same as worshipping with the community of people that you love. But it's still great for us to hear just now. Jesus said, True worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for these are the kind of the worshippers the Father seeks. Don't get hung up on buildings or locations or the kind of hymns or rituals and all the things that we get hung up on. Come to worship God, invited by Jesus. The Jesus who says, I am able and willing to meet all your needs, but I reserve the right to turn your life upside down. In Jesus, we meet God and we know God. He invites all to come to him, and through him we meet the Creator, the Lord of all. Now that is truly amazing. There's nothing that Jesus won't disrupt. No wonder that when talking about Aslan, the lion who represents Jesus in C.S. Lewis's Narnia Tales, we hear the following conversation. Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. He's the king, I tell you. All can worship God anywhere through Jesus. But what we can't do is hang up a do not disturb sign 
over our lives. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word. Shall we pray? God of abundant life, the stars of the night sky are too numerous to count, and so too are the blessings you bestow upon us. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the roofs over our heads, the food in our bellies, the security to worship, the warmth of fellowship, the support of families, the peace of your unconditional love. These are not things for us to own, but blessings that give us life, and we bring you our thanks. As we offer ourselves into your service, we pray you may continue to bless us, so others might hear and know the good news you offer of abundant life for all. Abundance, however, is still far off for too many people, so we offer our prayers for the many areas of need. We pray for all those who are far from home, who have been displaced because of conflict, who are wandering in a desert of destitution, who are longing for a place to call home. All who are ignored by international regulations are left out of decisions that affect them. May those who are often overlooked be ignored no more. We pray for all those who are struggling close to home, who have been unsettled by a change of circumstances, who are wandering in a desert of insecurity, who are longing for a job, good health or companionship, who feel overlooked by the rapid pace of life, and all who are struggling to see the next step amongst our lives which have been turned upside down. May those who often go unacknowledged be disregarded no more. We pray for all those who are struggling financially, against whom the economic system is stacked, for all who are wading through a deluge of debt, who are finding it hard to make ends meet, who are excluded because of unfair trade, and for those fighting tirelessly to make other voices heard. May every table of injustice be overturned. We pray for those who are close to our hearts and at the forefront of our minds at this time. May your kingdom come and your will be done. God of abundant life, we give thanks for all who have gone before us, inspiring us in this life and praising you in the next, asking that you guide us safely until we join with them in your unending glory. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen.
again for joining us here for worship today um, let me remind you that we as a church are, are here for you and our local community and the communities around us if you are in need of prayer or support or in practical care then please get in touch we'd love to be there for you and support you in any way that we can if you're joining with us live you can um, join us for virtual coffee straight after worship this morning the details are on the screen or if you click in the description box um, below the video, you'll find your details there as well. And a reminder about the blessing bags. Please do come along, um, collect a couple, go and be a blessing over these next few days to those around you. Thank you for joining us and may you have a great week. And we look forward to joining with you again sometime soon. God bless. Now go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.
on your keenly brightness So our faces display your likeness Ever changing from glory to glory Mirrored here may our lives tell your story Shine